In this video, we're going to tell you how to leverage Zoom to do your open houses, to meet with your agents, to mastermind with other agents, and how to leverage this technology. Now, I'm going to start this video from the Mac, so I'm showing you on a Mac. A lot of these features will work on a PC as well. Then I'll do a separate video on the iPhone and the iPad because you can use that out in the field even easier to showcase a home for an open house or anything like that. So I'm here in Zoom. I've already installed this. Now there's a couple settings you'll have to do. So I'd recommend you start off with coming to zoom.us and sign up for a free account. The free account will give you 45 minutes of video. They might have unlocked that right now due to what's happening in the world. And it's your ability to now network and talk to people anywhere in the world. So you're going to want to make sure that you do that. I recommend, by the way, you do get an external webcam. There's a lot of great Logitech webcams out there. Don't worry about whether it's 4K or this kind of K right now because a lot of live streaming is limited to what they call 1080p is the limit. So I'm here and I can sign up for an account. I already have one, so I'm going to sign in with my KW account. That is a Google business account, so you can do it that way or you can use an email address you want. You can even sign in with Facebook if you want. So I'm going to sign in with Google and I've already got mine connected. So this is going to take me to my account and it takes me to meetings. So what I love about this is you can actually schedule meetings. There's even an extension to put into Chrome and Microsoft Outlook. You can schedule your meetings and actually schedule your business. So I could even do this with clients if I wanted to, and I can schedule a meeting with them and do a virtual tour remotely, schedule my buyer and listing presentation face-to-face, -face, or I can schedule it with other agents to talk to them if I'm growing profit share or I'm a team leader and I want to recruit. So these are just some really neat things here, but let's show you what can Zoom even do. So I'm going to come to Zoom. Now this is installed on the Mac, so I can either come up here to start that, or this is the little dashboard that it starts with. And I'm going to start a meeting with video. So you're going to see me here on video. And I've got an external webcam. So you guys are seeing me using the Logitech, uh, one of the, I think it's the C920 or 922, one of those. And this is still the best camera on the market. Good quality, gets a wide angle, so I really like that. And here are the controls that you're going to see in the bottom. So we start with the sound. You can mute yourself by just clicking the mute button, and I can change my sound. So like right now, I could use the webcam sound if you're using a desktop. I could use headphones or an external microphone. There's a lot of great options on Amazon to buy. I'm actually using the Yeti Nano right now, which is kind of this robust webcam, or uh, sorry, microphone that I can use. And I've got the option here to either test it out and check my audio. I find a lot of times we use really bad audio in making these videos. So my advice is invest in an external microphone. There's even ones you can get that plug into your computer and clip onto your shirt. Those work well as far as making sure people can hear you. There's nothing worse right now than being on a Zoom call and one person's loud, one person's quiet, one person's grainy in their sound. Invest in some equipment, especially right now, and you can get all this stuff on Amazon inexpensively. All right, so that's the sound. And then I've got my video. I can stop the video, or I can click here and actually choose a camera if I have more than one. So if you've got a MacBook or even the iPad, sometimes the front camera isn't the best, and I would want to use an external camera for that. So there it is. I'm using the C930E is the microphone and the webcam I'm using. Now they also have the option for choose a virtual background. This is a little more advanced. It will give you a background behind you. Sometimes it's distracting more than it's beneficiary. However, if you're in a location that doesn't look great or you wanna have a nice background, you can use that. I do have the ability to invite people. So if I'm hosting a meeting and it's kind of just on the spur of the moment, I can come here to invite and copy the link, copy an invitation, select these people to invite, even do it by email and it's just my, ability to invite people. I like to schedule things, so I use the scheduler a lot in Zoom. Then if you have more than one person, you come to manage participants. Now I see a lot of times we're looking for that mute all button. This is where it is. Manage participants, and here's the mute all or unmute all. So it's your ability to quickly mute them, unmute them. You can do some extra settings as well around that if you have more than one person on this. They have polling, which is your ability to ask a question and get everybody to vote on it. This is great for interacting with people. As we move into this new era right now of digital communication and digital experiences, Zoom is really going to be the way to collaborate and work with people at a high level while keeping your safe distance. So then I've got an option for share, which I'll do in a second. 
the ability to chat with people in your room. So if your microphone's not working or some people like to use the chat, even when you're on live stream. So pay attention to this chat in case you see a one or people talking. I have it auto recording, but you can schedule and manually do a recording if you want to. I like to auto record because I can always delete later. Then I've got some settings under more. These are powerful. I can go live on Facebook with the Zoom. Now that's what I'm gonna go through today. If you use Workplace, they have that as well. And if you wanna do it live on YouTube, they have that option as well. So Zoom is really powerful. All right, so let's show you what the sharing options are. So if I come to share, I can share my entire desktop or just a window. Now be careful with the window. I see this a lot as well, where people will share only the window and then they'll try to pull up a separate window or a separate program and no one sees it. So I actually like to use desktop and pull up any window I need and everybody will see it. So if I were to do desktop right now, you're gonna see my screen, I'm gonna click share, and then they're gonna see the actual information of what was on my screen, which you guys are seeing now. And if I wanted to stop that share or I wanna switch it over to command, Here's command, I can show a person how to use command. Here are my leads, here's my production, product updates. You get the idea. So if I hit stop sharing, it keeps me back on video and stops sharing my screen. Now they've also got the option here for whiteboards. So if you wanted to just draw, this is a great tool to say, okay, we're gonna draw something today. We've got the three circles. Yeah, this is not best for circles. Yet yeah, you get the idea, I could draw my triangle for leads, listings, and leverage, whatever it is, and you can also use the eraser, which I'm gonna do to erase all that. So that will take a little bit more practice, but you could use that if you wanted to. So then I'm gonna show you under share, one of the features I love is the ability to share my phone. This is powerful when I'm teaching anything around the mobile app, especially with our new app today. What a great way to do this and show your consumers when you're meeting with them virtually how to leverage the KW app on their phone. Now, if you're on a Mac, it works with AirPlay very easily. However, I don't know if AirPlay is available on the PC. If it's not, you'll have the option here to plug in your iPhone and it will pull it up through the USB cable. So I'm gonna say AirPlay with the iPhone. This is gonna go share and give me an option now that says choose your Wi-Fi, which I'm already on, select AirPlay, and then choose Zoom. So I'll show you on my phone here. I'm gonna swipe down to get these controls and we're gonna click screen sharing. And screen sharing is gonna give me an option for the Zoom Mac Mini 2020, which is the name of my computer. And now you guys are seeing this screen. So here is my mobile app. So I can show a client how to use this to search for a home. We can show them the feed. I can show them the guide for buying a home, selling a home, and everything I do on this, they will see. So I love this feature and I use this one a lot to actually show things. So here's the history of properties that I've looked at. Here's different things that I'm doing. It's branded to me. By the way, if you have clients that are using this app and you wanna share it with your friends, click share app and you can easily share it with other people. So that's a way that I could do that on my phone. Hit stop sharing and now we're back to video. So these are really powerful, yet one of my most favorite features to use is live on Facebook. So I'm gonna do this as a demo so that you can actually see what happens here. So I'm saying live on Facebook. Now you're gonna get a little pop-up that says, go on Facebook and choose where you wanna post your video. So this allows you to say, choose on your timeline, a friend's timeline, share in a group, share an event. So in this case, I'm gonna share it in a group and then I could choose a group name. Actually, we're gonna use it on a page that I manage. I'm gonna do this in the J Trainer Extraordinaire. So if you haven't followed me on Facebook, you could do that. Click on my next button and this is going to prepare the live stream preview. So you're actually seeing what would happen. I find if you're gonna do this live stream, do it about five minutes before the live stream starts so that you can get this here. Now there's some settings. So here is the live stream taking the video from here. I can change some of the settings if I want. I like to give it one. This is a test. Put in your description, join us for this training. You can do some tags if you want. If you're hosting an actual event, if you use the events, this is a great way to select it and go live. And then you hit go live. So when I say go live, it's gonna take a moment. It's loading this all in. So again, that's why three to five minutes before you start your actual training, 
you'll want to start this Facebook Live so we can get going. It's going to redirect, and voila, it is now going to be live streaming. So if I came to my page right now, you're going to be seeing on my page that I am going live right now, and it just alerted everybody who likes my page that I am live doing this training so that people can see it, I can interact with people, and now it is going to be posted here and working with that. So I can start a group, people can watch it. This is gonna be powerful if I'm doing it with my clients because I can do this as a general buying and listing session or maybe a general update. I can invite people into my Zoom or I find I can reach even more people by leveraging Facebook Live. Okay, so we get that idea. I'm gonna close Facebook here. We're gonna come back to my little dashboard. So I'll minimize this. Here we go. And we are going to click here to stop the live stream. That's it. So there's a lot of great features that are in here. It's going to take some practice. Take a moment. Test it out. Practice before you start doing this with a client or other agents or other people that you want to use this with. you got to learn how it works first. Then you can stop your recording if you want to stop it early. And when you hit end meeting, you'll have the option to say end meeting for all. Leave the meeting, which means if other people are in there, they can keep meeting. I'm going to say end meeting for all, and it is done. Now I'm gonna get an alert, you will get an email notification when the cloud recording is ready. So let's talk about some settings that you would need. So here in this dashboard on the Mac, under settings, here's a couple things that I recommend. In general, I like doing these settings, but video is the one that's gonna matter, especially around mirror your video. This is important. If I uncheck that, you're gonna see me in this way. If I mirror the video, it's gonna go the other way. So it's my ability to mirror my video and unmirror my video. Now, in this case, we're not backwards, so I can leave it unmirrored. Touch up your appearance will kind of give you a little filter. So if you're worried what you look like, you could use that to clean you up. Uh, you've got the ability to display participant's name. I like that. Always show video preview when joining a meeting. Um, you can spotlight your video when speaking. So these are some settings that you might want to go in. Audio that you can change if you're too high, too low that you can play with. Um, the virtual backgrounds, you can customize them. This is what I was talking about where you can have a virtual, here I am in San Francisco, grass, um, extraterrestrial, and different things that you can use. So there's a lot of options that you can play with here. The other thing that I recommend is going to the actual website. So I'm going to come to the website now and show you the settings that are there because this is powerful. So if I came into Zoom the settings, Here's some settings that I recommend. So host video on is good. I want participants on video. They can join before the host, that's fine. You're gonna have your own personal meeting ID that you can set. But I think the big one here is gonna be around the actual recordings. So I use this to record. And what I like to say is automatic recording in the cloud. You get a one gig if you pay for the premium version to store online and then you can clean things up. That's just easier, so if I'm on the go, it does this automatically. So there's some settings in here. You can have it auto-delete that recording. So a couple little tricks with it. Then you've got your option for the recordings itself to come in here and these are my recordings. So these are the ones of me getting ready doing this this morning. Here's the one I did from yesterday that I can come in and I can then download this file to use, which is actually a class that I did. So now I can download these videos to use and actually see a preview of it here. If I didn't want to download it, you just want to share it with people. You can also just copy a shareable link as well. So the big thing with settings, there'll be some options, but I'm going to stay with meeting. What if I want to schedule a meeting with my client or an agent? So you could say schedule a new meeting. Let's say I call this one, this is a test. You could put a description if you want to. And when are you scheduling this for? So let's say I schedule it today at noon. By the way, you can change it for time zone as well. Is it recurring? You can choose that. But I find if you use recurring, it gets rid of your personal meeting ID. So that's my personal ID. Don't use it unless you're in my meeting. Um, I can record the meeting, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> required registration forces them to sign in. And then I like host video on, but this is the power of this. Enable them to join before, that's fine. Mute everybody upon entry. If you're gonna do this group with a bunch of people, please mute them all first, because it gets very chaotic very quickly. You can enable a waiting room if you want. I'm not using that. And then I use record meeting automatically in the cloud. And if I have a different co-host, I can put their email address here. 
I click Save, and now it's in my calendar of meetings. So here's the one for today, and I can come to the website as well to hit Start. However, if I were to come back to this dashboard and look at our schedule, I can schedule one, and then I'll see in my upcoming ones today that I can actually schedule and start it here. So these are just some of the tips that you can use with Zoom. I am use this at a high level. My files are downloading. I'll do a video on once I've downloaded this, how do I upload it on YouTube? What editing do I do? The goal is let's leverage this technology to create content, to get meetings face to face. Let's work together on this and take advantage of these tools. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, you can follow me on YouTube and KDB Connect today. Oh, 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 oh,